I'm sure most of you must have guessed what is the issue. The issue is uh, the amount and how do you fix the amount? Well, one way to do this uh, would be to do the following, right? So your update rule xt plus 1 right now says it is xt minus f dash of xt, right? So where this is the direction which we think is the right way to move. Of course, we have not argued this for general functions. We are just saying this is true for x minus 5 squared, but we will come to that generalization a little bit later. For the moment, uh, uh, assume that this is a good direction, uh, which means that the direction is not the issue, it is more the issue of uh, how much you are moving in this direction. One way to fix this would be to, you know, decide how much you want to move in this particular direction, right. So, and that we will call as a new value which we will multiply. So, let me make this clear if, um, so that we do not, there is no confusion. We are going to multiply a scalar value, right, which we will, we are going to call as the step size, <coughs> right. So, you want to take one step in the direction of minus f dash of x t, but not all the time, right. So, you want to take smaller and smaller steps potentially and that is what this eta t is going to do, right. So, this is a value, it is a scalar, it is a scalar quantity and it is positive. Well, if eta t equals 1, for every t, then it means that whatever we had earlier, we would go back to that. But that is a bad algorithm. We know that there is an example where if you start with 10, you are going to oscillate. So, eta t cannot be 1 all the time. Now, which means that the idea is that you start maybe with 1, right. So, you start from some x naught, maybe you, you start with 1 because you do not know uh, what is a good step size. Maybe you start with 1, you will go somewhere else. Now, maybe you should not take a step of 1 again from this new point. Maybe you will take only a smaller step, right. So, maybe you will take a smaller step, maybe you will come here and then you will take an even smaller step and if you keep doing that, hopefully you will converge to the minimum, right. So, of course, I am talking about this particular function that we have, right. So, that is the idea, right. So, you do not want to take uh, the same uh, steps size in each round, but you want to somehow minimize this, right. <clears throat> now, the question is how to choose the step size. It seems like a reasonable idea uh, to choose different step sizes uh, in different rounds and it also seems like a reasonable idea to make this smaller and smaller so that we do not really, you know, uh, end up uh, uh, oscillating. So, that it at least tries to solve that problem hopefully. Uh, but it is not clear yet how to choose the step size, right. So, as a function of t, as, I mean the step size is going to be different for different iterations and we want like a decreasing sequence of step size, right. So, ideally as a function of t. The question then is that to complete our algorithm, we also have to specify how to choose the step size. Now, <coughs> there are several ways to reduce uh, your step size, right. So, you can start with 1 um, and then make it any number smaller than this in different ways, right. So, there are so many sequences of uh, step sizes that one might want to, one might be able to choose of course. Now, the question is uh, what is a good sequence of step sizes? How do we determine that? Well, let us take one example and see if that makes uh, sense. So, here is an um, uh, first attempt at coming up with a step size sequence, right. Um, well, here is a sequence. So, eta, um, well, eta naught is 1, eta 1 is half, eta 2 is a quarter, eta 3 is 1 eighth and so on. In general, you will have uh, eta t as 1 by 2 to the t, right. Uh, basically, you are halving your step size at every time, right. Um, it starts with 1, then becomes half, then becomes quarter and so on, right. And it um, 
decreases as t increases, which seems okay, which seems like a reasonable first attempt. Now, what might be, is the, is the question to ask is, the, is this the best possible step size? I mean, is it a good step size? If not, are there any potential issues that uh, we might have sidestepped um, in, by using the step size, <coughs> right? Um, well, one thing to keep in mind is the following. Right? So, your x naught that you are starting with, you have no clue how close you are to the actual minimum. Right? So, nobody tells you where the actual minimum is, at least when you are running it as a computer. Uh, the computer has no clue where the actual minimum indeed is. It starts with an arbitrary potential x naught. And it, when it starts with an arbitrary x naught, <coughs> it, is, it is not clear how close is x naught to x star, where x star, let's say, is the minimum, right? So, no idea how close x naught is to x star, right? So, x star is the optimal value. Now, which means that you might be really, really far off from your x star and yet if you keep doing this iterative algorithm by taking the negative of the derivative and taking eta t step size in that particular direction, if you keep repeating this, you should eventually hope that you will reach x star. That is a hope, right? So, we want to get to x star, um, but we do not know how close x naught is to x star, which means that if you are taking steps in directions, the step sizes should not really become too small after a point that maybe you are still in the right direction, but your step sizes are too small that you are not even able to reach x star. That is a problem that might happen and we should be wary of that, right? So, for example, uh, in this particular step size that we have chosen, let us say if I start from a particular value. <coughs> And for the moment, assume that my function is such that it may not be x minus 5 squared, it is a different function which will always give me uh, d equals 1, right? So, the direction is always one unit in the positive direction. Let us say the function is like that. I mean, uh, if you want to think about what function would have the direction always equal to 1, feel free to think about that, but that is not the main point here. I am just saying that let us say there is a function, no matter which point you ask for the direction, you take the minus f dash of x, it is always going to give you a value of 1, right? So, let us say we start and let us say the optimum value x star uh, is 5, right? So, for this particular function. Now, let us say we start at uh, uh, 2, let us say we start at the point 2, right? And we need to reach 5, which is where the optimal is, right? So, this is where the optimal is, this is x star. Now, what am I, what is my algorithm going to do? Well, what I am saying is that this is x naught for our algorithm uh, and I have to reach x star and if I use the step size which we just came up with which is eta t is 1, 1 over 2 to the t which means that in the first round I am going to take a step of 1 unit, right? So, from 2 I will take a step of 1 unit and I will reach 3 which is good. I am getting closer to the uh, minimum. Now, in the second round, I am going to take a half step, which means from 3, this is a 1 unit uh, eta, eta naught was 1 and d is always 1. So, which means that 1 into 1, I take a, took a step of 1. Here, eta 1 is going to be half because it is 1 over 2 power t, which means that I will end up with 3.5. Now, eta 2 is going to be quarter eta 2 is going to be quarter, which means I will reach 3.75. Now, if I keep doing this, think where you would eventually end up, right? So, will you reach 5 or not? Well, as you can see, you are getting smaller and smaller step sizes. You started with 2, you start, you, I mean, there was a good step size initially from 2 to 3, then it is becoming smaller and smaller at every round. Now, if you do, I mean, if you think about this for a minute, you will understand that no matter how many rounds you run this algorithm, even if you run this for infinite amount of time, you are never going to get any closer to 5 than 4, right? 
at every round your derivative negative derivative was giving you the right direction which was always one right so it was always saying that hey move to the to to your right right so which was the correct direction but our step sizes we designed it such that it it kind of reduced by half at every round and unfortunately that is only leading us till the value of 4 we will never reach the value of 5 now this is the opposite problem of what we had earlier right the problem that we had earlier was you took if you did not have step sizes you might take too large a step in the direction of the gradient negative uh, sorry in the direction of the negative derivative and that will be issue uh, problem because it might lead to oscillations now we introduce a step size and we see that well if you are not careful about choosing the sequence of step sizes it might it might result in the opposite problem where your directions are correct but then you are not eventually reaching the minimum because your steps are too small in that direction which is also a problem to be wary of right so because we will not then be able to reach 5 now the question is <coughs> which means that this first attempt is a failure right so the question is if this sequence of step sizes is not a great sequence to actually use then what else should we do right so how else can we come up with step sizes is there a different uh, sequence that we can think of which might uh, not have this problem right so the problem is that you might you you have two conflicting objectives right one is <coughs> you want to reduce your step size as you increase your number of iterations otherwise it might lead to oscillations the other objective is that you should not reduce it too much <coughs> that you will not be able to reach your minimum right so which means that your reduction should still be such that you will be able to reach your minimum no matter how far your minimum is from the place where you started now is there such a step size at all i mean these these look like conflicting objectives is there such a step size at all um, is something that you can pause and think and we'll talk about this next okay so now i'm going to come up with a new sequence of step sizes different from the previous step size that we looked at and it's going to look as follows right so i'm going to think of my nt as as follows uh, maybe i'll give you the sequence and then we'll generalize it so my sequence is going to be 1 1 by 2 so far same as what we had earlier now the third <coughs> step in the previous case was 1 over 4 now i'm going to say it's 1 over 3 right and this is 1 over 4 1 over 5 dot 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 right <coughs> Which means that my eta t, if I want to write this formally, uh, because eta t starts from this 0, this is eta 1, this is eta 2 and so on. So my eta t is going to be 1 by uh, t plus 1, right. So this is my new sequence of step size. <coughs> At first glance, it seems that this should have the same issue as the previous sequence that we tried right so which was 1 over 2 power t uh, because the values 1 1 by 2 1 by 3 and so on also seem to kind of go towards 0 so which means that well it might seem that I might not really be able to you know reach uh, there might be cases where I will not be able to reach the uh, minimum <coughs> right so the the in other words if you think about this um, in the previous case eta t was 1 over 2 power t right so which was 1 half 1 fourth dot 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 and this sequence had the property that if I had some t equals you know 0 to infinity eta t which is the sum of all my step sizes right so if I start from a particular point and they summed up all my step sizes let us say my d was always 1. Uh, so then this is t equals 0 to infinity <coughs> 1 over 2 power t of course 1 over 2 power t um, if I did this sum well this sum is going to converge to the value 2 why this is 1 plus half plus quarter plus 1 eighth and this is an um, one can show that this sequence will actually be equal to 2 right so which means that no matter where I start if I choose this uh, sequence 
uh, and if my direction is the same, then I will not be able to get too far, right. So, I cannot get to more than 2 units and this, this is a bad thing, right. So, because we cannot move too much. Now, what happens to this case? So, if I do t equals 0 to infinity eta t here, so which becomes t equals 0 to infinity 1 over t plus 1, <coughs> which is 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus dot dot dot. Now, the question is where does this converge to, right. So, this sequence went to 2, what about the um, this sequence? Well, it turns out that this sequence does not converge to anything, right. So, this actually is infinity. Right. So, it is it's a very, very interesting sequence. The values become smaller and smaller at the cumulative sum grows to infinity, right. So, which means that no matter where I start, because my step sizes, though they get smaller, because the cumulative step sizes is, is going to go to infinity, I will be able to, <coughs> you know, make sure that um, I will eventually reach the minimum. Of course, there are a lot of technical details uh, to show that this is indeed the case and so on. Um, but the point I want to make is that this is a good step size sequence. This rather this is bad, it does not work whereas this typically works, right. So, uh, without going into too much details about why this works and so on, uh, this is the intuition as to why it works because this cumulative sum is actually infinity. 